Chaz is in here too. I mean, lots of people. Um, let's see. Somebody ought to be able to kill this fucker. Um, yeah, so I don't know, you know, we can talk this stuff to death about how we do this math, but I'm just saying there is math to life. There's equation science, and it's, you know, I, we have to make the argument, but I'm just saying that, I mean, I have to make a more perfect argument, a more detailed argument, um, uh, more, let's see, how to, pers well, persuasive is the key thing. Uh, about this value equation because people are going to keep caught up in the illusion you know I mean it's really hard to undo that perception of value when it's so strong I mean when you're yeah you know, when you're really passionate you know let's say you're in love with a woman or something and you're all caught up in it and you're in the middle of the the experience it's going to be really hard for somebody to convince you that oh yeah you're just chasing synthetic cheese and it's all bullshit and it's you know because your your desire is going to be really really strong, but if I take some of that out of you, if I you know cause you some grief and some hardship, and I you know you're not driven by desire anymore, you're just driven by obligation, and and you know your life is tedious and mundane. Well, then the math is going to be a lot easier to see, but you're not going to be blinded by some sort of strong sense of a tangible and obtainable satisfaction I mean the further satisfaction the further away from your reality I can put it the further away the cheese is the the less the smell the less the taste the less you're salv salivating uh, you know it's a lot easier to make the argument then um, that's understandable and seeable and that's just can you know I mean it's, it's obvious I suppose but I guess what I'm arguing is is people have to intellectually understand that this passion thing is so arbitrary you know I mean it's it can it, it, it infects you out of out of out of nonsense circumstances and yeah I just change a few circumstances and your passions are completely different and so that should that should be a giveaway of just how synthetic it all really is you know that it's just our balls you know <laughs> it's just it's just this hormone thing chemistry thing it doesn't really have anything to do with the brain thing I mean life's not a rational but you have the undertaking it's, it's you have you the other it's argument completely though, you irrational have like boredom and boredom and freaking what the hell is this about and it's like, what the fuck am I going to do, and all that, and it's like, that's a, a driving force also, how do you convince people out of that? Well, I don't know why I would, like I, I said, that's, that, 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 strong. that, those emotions are to my advantage, so why would I want to talk them out of that, I want them to be uncomfortable and unsettled and dissatisfied, because then it's going to be easier for them to see the truth that they are, are just propelling themselves out of stupid obligation or like most of the forces that are pushing them are negative forces not positive forces their sense of inadequacy their sense of incompleteness their sense that they have something to accomplish and I can you know and I can talk them out of all of that I think I can make arguments that can be understood like I say, if they're caught up in some sort of strong magnetic attraction some sort of connection to something that's right in front of them that's attainable satisfaction the arguments a lot harder to make in that circumstance and I'm just saying like I said I'm just saying that part of that should give people 
should put them on notice, even knowing how they go through their own lives, where there's years where they're full, uh, they're so distracted by, you know, some sort of silly ambition. And they look at it in hindsight and say, oh, God, that was so stupid. I mean, I was so addicted. I was so just caught up in it. And that should really give them some sort of perspective and to understand that, yeah, it is just an illusion in our head, this idea that I must have or I need to get or I have to do. It's just a perception. It just it doesn't, it's not made out of anything real. That's a good point. That's a good point. And, but even if you could do no. that, no. then you'd have to circumvent the hard wiring that we're born with. That's what I think it's always, always talking about is circumventing that by, I mean, you can't circumvent it. You can only understand it and accept it and then try to, um, you know, explain how you just, you know, the wiring's dangerous and that 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 hard wiring will try to bend your brain to make you think you're a con you know th this is not the truth um, but that's going to be a rationalization and you have to try to stay focused on the, the true picture not this illusion that's being created by your biology but your point's taken in the sense that <laughs> there's always going to be a battle being between aware this idea of, of being aware of being aware that you're fucking moron. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's the way I'd phrase it. Because it's not that we're a moron, but just that we're a beast. We're an animal. We're gorillas. You know, I mean, just to be aware of the gorilla that lives inside of you that's really running the show, and that it's using your brain way too often as a rock, as a hammer, you know, as a stick. I mean, it's turning your brain into a piece of shit that's just being used as a scheming tool to get these, to, you know, your superficial personal advantage. So the idea is to get rid of these distractions of fulfillment that really don't get us anywhere and concentrate on the ones uh, that we can have a concerted effort towards making humanity uh, a better place. Yeah, and part of it requires a kind of re reconditioning, I would argue, that maybe we can recondition ourselves so we're actually satisfied, that we actually personally gain from that perception of accomplishment, that it actually will start to mean something to us to say, yes, I want to live a good life. Like like the Scrooge scenario, in a sense that he went from valuing <laughs> gain to valuing his impact on other people's lives and being able to see the, the, the you know, deriving joy and satisfaction from the idea that now he can do good for other people. He can make other people comfortable, and that, that makes, that was a very empowering tool for his reclamation now is that now he can make up for the past crimes in the future but also that he can gain from that personally and so maybe we can create um, in ourselves uh, um, you know a set of memes where we can rationalize our way into actually feeling good about doing good so we can actually jump on the grenade with a smile on our face or something like that um, but yeah, it's hard to recondition animals, and like all other animals, it's really going to be hard to turn us, you know, it's hard to get the lion to lie down with the lamb, and that's essentially what it's going to take for us to do the right thing. It really does take something as unnatural as lying down with the lamb, kind of, in a way. I mean, it's just, and so it's hard to recondition animals once they're conditioned. That, that's my argument. So yeah, it's, it's not easy, but that's what else we got to cling to.
that makes sense. The memes over generations strengthening themselves. Um, but, uh, you know, I've come to that. I've come to that realization that you're talking about. And it's, but I keep falling back on the same distractions, sex, money, influence. And it's hard to, uh, it's hard to get away from that. This biological wiring, hard wiring we have. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, if everybody makes the effort, perhaps over generations we will change. If everybody comes to your realization. Well, it's not even that everybody has to, but yeah, I mean, we obviously have to condition kids different. I mean, you have to, we have to recognize the traps and you know write a best practices book about what we should you know embrace in kids and maybe they shouldn't be encouraged to be involved in competitive sports as much and all this other stuff to try to weed out some of that ego crap there's a ton of ego shit that really you know really fucks with our heads that goes on in our maturation in this society uh, that competitive thing is way too dominant a force. I mean, now I'm talking like James or something, but yeah, I mean that's the kind of thing where I think we could, we could, we we can't genetically fix the future, but yeah, we can definitely fix how we're conditioning people, how we're raising them. We can raise them to be a vegetarian. We can raise them to not, you know, um, love violence and all this other crap that we we breed them in a sense to to live for. And we could breed that out of them in terms of how we condition them, how we maturate them. So that would be really constructive, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just as guilty. I mean, I'm still, you know, I mean, in principle, like I say, you can know that women are humans and they're equal and all this stuff, but you're still looking at them and saying, pussy. <laughs> you know, you're still saying, you know, and it's, and it's, you like humili it's humiliating to be controlled by this, this this selfishness and this you know what's my angle kind of approach to living but I mean I step in it all the time too I mean it's just part of how the brain functions I mean I'm, I'm a self-interested selfish little fuck but I know that's what I am and I recognize it and I admit it and I'm, and I'm going to argue that that's what's going on in your head too and so let's just admit the truth and quit pretending uh, uh whoops sorry right. oh, quit pretending our brain is something else sorry mic on mic off problem uh, I need to get a drink so you may talk among yourselves for a moment please Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, you seem to have some inner conflict going on. You're always, um, it seems like you're always agonizing over uh, values and trying to, uh, you know, uh, associate a, some type of mathematical equation to it. Am I seeing that right? Butthole. Uh, no, but Remy's, you know, Remy's coming along slowly. I, I can see it. I can see it. I'm, I can see I'm etching the, 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 the crust of crud that's on his brain. I'm etching it off. <laughs> little by little. Oh my god. 